Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo, and I wanted to ask, do you believe that iOS is getting worse on purpose? That's the full question. Don't just stop midway and say, yeah, it's getting worse, because I think many of us would agree on that. We've seen example after example, either ones that I've surfaced here in videos, certainly recently, going all the way back to iOS 7, uh, and or, you know, if you've been watching my social feed and my mentions. Everybody seems to be screen capping and, and, and recording video of horrific iOS experiences that we have been seeing ever since iOS 7. So I, I don't really want to relitigate that topic. Yes, I do believe demonstrably, definitively, empirically, iOS is absolutely getting worse with time in relation to performance, in, in, in relation to polish, in, in relation to everything that makes a quality operating system a quality operating system. Let's face it, iOS is really starting to show its age. There's a lot of cruft in there, and Apple is showing no signs of reversing course on uh, quality control. So are they doing it on purpose in relation to older iPhones, to older iPads? Uh, there's a term that's been thrown about for a number of years in relation to technology, planned obsolescence. Apple allegedly is doing this on purpose. And I, I just have to just throw this out there right now. I don't know if I have a definitive position on whether or not they're doing this on purpose. I'm somewhere in the middle erring on the side of I don't think they're doing it on purpose, but by not doing it on purpose, they're still harming their brand. Um, it's Apple's choice. I, I have nothing to do with it. But I did want to have a deeper discussion on this because, one, technology was designed to be replaced. Software was designed to be upgraded. Now, just because you get an upgraded version of software doesn't mean it gets better. I think we've seen over time newer versions of software not performing as well as the older versions of software. That's certainly been the case in the past. Apple does not have a corner on that market. And in relation to hardware, it was just designed to be replaced. So, you know, if your current device is working well enough with its current version of software or firmware, it's it's not going to need to get replaced until it's completely outmoded and, and, and quite honestly, a useless tool. Technology, by design, will always advance. But, that said, if you notice a marked decrease in performance if your iPhone or iPad gets less responsive, more buggy, uh, you know, it, it introduces new problems, issues that weren't there that seem to be uh, tied into your hardware, uh, you know, the, the, the choice that you made with the, the iPhone or iPad that you purchased specifically after you installed a new operating system because every new version of iOS is kind of a new operating system. It is the same. It's iOS, but they change a great deal of things and in the process break a great deal of things. In fact, I would go as far as to say they break more than they actually fix. It, that's not Im based on any empirical data. What is, however, empirical, something that you can research right now, the impetus for me talking about this today uh, there have been discussions, uh, some amount of controversy, around the idea that Apple's doing this on purpose. They're effectively uh, developing iOS such that it will run on older iPhones and iPads, but in, at the same time introduces a series of problems to further uh, drive that iPhone holder or the iPad holder to upgrade to the newer, faster version. If you head over to Google Trends right now, and no, this is not a whole Android is better than iOS because that's an argument that no one's ever going to win. Better is always relative. Uh, so if you go over there and you search for iPhone slow, you will likely see, and you search for terms like this, you'll see spikes every year, just constantly, consistently. Why, over time, does the iPhone get slow or seem to get slower right around new iPhone hardware releases? Hmm, why could that be? Is Apple developing iOS such that it, it, it makes those older devices completely unusable, such that people are driven to buy the new hardware, which makes Apple money? Because remember, Apple does not make money with free software, like their, their platforms. Their platforms drive their hardware, the hardware purchases, or the services that people buy into, or the apps that people purchase on those platforms. So it's not in Apple's best interest to necessarily have a poorly performing platform because they do make money, not directly with the platform itself, but what runs on the platform. But at the same time, they make a lot of money 
a big, huge amount of money with their devices. And, and the device market is starting to slow down. This, we've got a, a massive saturation. The Apple's had this problem with the iPad for a number of years. doesn't matter what features they throw out there. People don't feel the need to upgrade. I, I feel, as I've kind of alluded to in a recent video, that the same may very well be happening with iPhones. But if you look for these spikes, why is it happening at the same time? Because people, more often than not, will update, as well they should, to the latest version of iOS or any uh, any uh, new iteration uh, you know, automatically. The update gets pushed down to them. Oh, yeah, it's, it's an update. I need to get the update. I need to get the update. And for the most part, Apple's been trustworthy uh, as far as that's concerned. I, I've... I believe they've been trustworthy in that department in terms of, uh, you know, pushing out updates that should be installed. The problem is, is those updates will very often stunt the capabilities of the hardware, which again, further underscores my point that I've been saying all along. So even if you don't believe me, even if let's say for argument's sake, Chris, you know, I, I don't, I don't understand why you're saying iOS is horrible. If you've ever installed iOS on an older older device, mind you, a year old device, and suddenly that device is not as responsive uh, as it was before. Let's say you don't run any bugs, but certain glitches start to appear and things get s slower. It's not because the hardware changed. It's because the software changed. This is speaking to the same lack of quality control. Apple has no financial incentive to make that operating system on an older device run just as well as it might on a newer device. Even though, yes, iOS now runs just as poorly on a newer device as it does on a slightly older device. That was my, uh, I guess, summation of, uh, or one, one summation point in uh, comparing uh, our previous gen iPhones to the current gen uh, iPhones. Um, but are they doing this on purpose? Or is it just a byproduct of their sloppy development uh, practices and processes? So iOS, some would argue, is forced obsolescence, planned obsolescence. Uh, I think it's good that Apple pushes down these older uh, phones or to these older phones, these newer updates potentially is an upsell. Like it could be a, a psychosomatic thing where, oh, I installed the new software, uh, you know, but it, it now my my phone sucks. I need the new phone. I need the new iPhone. Wh why? Why? Why would they think a newer iPhone is necessarily going to pass you? Well, because it's faster. Faster is better, right? Not necessarily. I believe Apple's counting on it, or they would be wise to count on it. I wouldn't rest on that laurel. But if, if they know that giving people software and, and an experience with the software on an older device is going to keep them happy, it may raise customer satisfaction levels, or happy enough, even if they felt that it was a horrible experience and it was not a good thing, they, as, as, as the user looking at this newly updated old phone, not having a good time with it, are not likely to abandon that phone outright and switch to another platform, that could be too much pain, especially if that phone has something that's connected to them, not physically, but if they use something that only Apple can provide or have other devices or services that only Apple, uh, they've bought into their ecosystem effectively, that only that, that Apple is able or has been able to, to, to give them. So Apple may recognize that it's more likely that they'll upgrade to a newer device than just leave Apple entirely the more they can get their hooks in them. I'm not faulting Apple for that. I'm not blaming them for that at all. It's it's a good business practice. It's a competitive advantage. It's the thing that made Apple stand out among uh, the rest of, 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 of the uh, consumer electronics uh, industry. And that is absolutely true. It's a flat fact. Uh, sorry, Jedi is now fighting off a bath. If you hear her screaming in the background, she'll be fine just a few minutes and then she'll be... Uh, a happy baby in the bath. Um, iOS gets cleaned up, but at the same time that it gets cleaned up, more things break or more things get messy. And I hope that's a fun bath in there, if you can hear her at all. I don't know how well these uh, mics pick up audio in the in the background, but I can certainly hear Jedi. She'll be fine. Uh, the rest of you with older iPhones, I, I, I think I can hear you crying and screaming in the background too. Uh, should you avoid upgrading to iOS because your iPhone or iPad experience is going to get worse? No, I don't think that's the right way to do it. What I would consider, though, is that Apple is probably going to make your device perform worse if you update to the new version of iOS. Just be forewarned. You, you at least now know that it's been laid out in front of you. So don't be shocked if you update to a new platform, a new version of a platform, not a new platform outright, I guess I should clarify my earlier uh, statement, but it, it, something that's new that could break functionality, including the hardware that it was running on, which is ample hardware. This is what's so baffling. This is what gives the conspiracy theory so much weight. People are talking about this. Um, I, I, I don't want to believe it. It doesn't mean I don't believe it. It's just that there are valid points on both sides. 
I sit on the side, though, uh, that Apple, I don't think, would do something like that. Maybe I'm too blind. Maybe I don't want to see it. Maybe, maybe I think that would just potentially just upend everything that, that Apple would need to ensure its own survival. The last thing you want to do is, you know, treat your customer, uh, like that, you know, Although I have said that some people, I believe, suffer from Stockholm Syndrome in relation to just buying blindly into any brand and what it, what it uh, might put out there on a regular basis. Um, but you just also have to recognize that the Apple ecosystem is driven largely on hardware. But it, it, they're really, they're not doing themselves any favors by releasing software. There's just, it's, it's, it's bad. I had someone ask, and I don't know if I'm going to do a separate video on this, but I'll just throw it in there now. How do I feel about iOS 11 on my iPad Pro 10.5 inch uh, uh, model? It's fine. It's it's okay. It feels feels performance wise as as solid as iOS 10 was on it. Though I can barely remember iOS 10 on it, minus the dock. And here's my problem with iOS 11 on the iPad. It's so filled with slop. Uh, I don't even want to use the iPad. So you know, I'm kind of caught in the middle. I don't think Apple's doing that on purpose because that would just be really bad practice but still by having bad software poor software development uh practices or, or, or a, a, a non-existent quality control they are creating in software poor experiences on not just current gen hardware but previous gen hardware as well knowing full well that people who are invested in the apple ecosystem are likely to stay within it so i'm Again, I'm, I'm trying to recap and reiterate to, to give you a better understanding of not just where the conspiracy that they're doing this on purpose comes from, but where users are now stuck with one company that's driving everything with their eye clearly not on the ball of software quality control. This is not me just slagging iOS 11 because, yes, it will improve with point updates. This is me slagging iOS 11, 10, 9, 8, 7 because it started with 7. That's when everything changed. Devices got worse. Existing devices got worse. So then you got to ask yourself, is that a system that you want to stick with? Is that a system that you want to invest yourself in? Because it's an investment. It is an investment. And it's not just about that one device. It's about how that device is supported, including what kind of quality comes into that device from the manufacturer, the only manufacturer that's going to push those operating systems to that particular device. You have to look at that model, and I, I, I just take a serious, hard look at that model and then ask yourself the question, is Apple, maybe not if they're doing that on purpose, I think that's an interesting discussion point because I could be convinced either way, not saying that Apple is, again, I'm not accusing them of, of anything they're not doing, you know, I'm, I'm just only, this is conjecture, this is just throwing it out there. Ask yourself the question, is that type of uh, process that's cyclical. Every year we go through this process. Is that the kind of process you want to stick with? Knowing full well when the next big update comes down the pike, you'll get it. You'll get the bragging rights for getting it. But you know it may very well, more often than not, render your now current iOS device not as clean, not as as, as uh, 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 bug-free. If it was bug-free to begin with, uh, you're going to have a jankier experience. So... Apple's hardware is now vastly outpacing its software, and I think this is very dangerous for Apple, let, let alone the users within Apple's ecosystem. You know, uh, it's, it's a dangerous road to go on because now they're throwing more hardware at a software problem, but the software problem still exists. It, it, it's just a matter of time, I believe, before Apple has to effectively clean house and, and almost start all over again with certain compatibilities in place. Because there's so much uh, uh, built on top of so much built on top of so much, it just it's just it's a mess. It's an absolute nightmare. Uh, and again, you, you don't take my word for it. Look at my mentions, not the comments in, on YouTube. Go to Twitter. Look at my mentions. You, I've become the poster child for this. Not that I wanted to. I'm not Apple Quality Control or QA. Not at all. I just I know what I see. Others know what they see. Ask yourself that question. Uh, not are they doing it on purpose that's the question i was asking you is this something that you want to stick with knowing full well that apple is not going to give you a better experience in a year's time and here's the worst part ios 11 yeah it may kind of get a little better ish over the course of the year they, they the, the software releases tend to do that uh but you know then a year from now it starts all over again it's a never-ending cycle
Who's going to break it? I don't think Apple's going to break it as long as people keep buying. Uh, what could they do differently? What would Chris Perillo then recommend Apple do? One, put someone in a position of power who actually understands design, who actually understands user experience and user interface, and also understands it's not the idea or the feature, it's the implementation. That's, that's a start. The second thing they could do is stagger major releases. Uh, much like they've done with uh, Mac OS, which I generally don't have complaints about because it, it works. Things improve steadily over time, but I don't look for major uh, desktop uh, uh, software releases every year. Why should people anticipate that with uh, iOS? Take a year, clean it up, and, and, then, and, then, and then set those practices straight so that you don't have to worry about clean up uh, two years from then. But honestly, just, just, just slow things down. Slow things down to make the software work well enough so that when we have to go with a new version of iOS, it's not jank all over again. Rendering all our existing valuable devices just unusable. So I, I, I just wanted to talk about that, you know, outright, because I see a lot of it, and I, I wanted to have a deeper conversation, not just a knee-jerk, uh, uh, you know, reaction to it. I, I think that's how Apple gets you to upgrade, yes, but... I, I don't necessarily know if they're they're doing it on purpose. It's good questions to ask you, good questions that I'm asking you to ask yourself. Uh, let's keep that conversation elevated. Let's keep talking about this kind of stuff. This is this is the type of technology topic that I prefer to dive into rather than just the, you know, here's the latest gadget that's going to be irrelevant in another week. Uh, thank you again for paying attention. Thank you for listening. I do love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.